Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be installing Fleece's LML CP3 Conversion 50 State Legal Kit. Fleece was one of the first companies to come out with the CP3 conversions, um, battling the known failures that we have with the CP4 in the LML uh, trucks. Now, the 50 state legal kit is going to be a CP3 conversion that is going to leave all emissions intact and uh, has an EO number on the pump uh, and it, so it's good to go. Another nice feature of this kit is it's, it is no tuning required. So this is a drop-in CP3 conversion. Um, this was a collaboration between SNS and Fleece. Um, this is an SNS 50 state legal uh, carb or carb approved pump. This is the CP3 conversion actually has the doser line on it so it's ready to drop in and it's no tuning required again. Uh, Fleece's CP3 conversion kit gets you to where you can do the installation EGR intact and not have any problems. So this is a really really slick kit comes with the pump and everything uh, ready to go. We're going to do an installation on this today Fleece sent this down for us, so big thank you to them uh, for that. So installing it on a 2016 GMC, it's a gorgeous truck. Um, no CP4 problems yet, preventative for sure. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with the installation. So this is gonna be an involved installation and we wanna to try to make this video as informative as well as uh, try to cut out all of the uh, dead air stuff that doesn't really need to be in the uh, video stuff that's really really super easy for you to do so let's talk about what we did preliminary just setting up for this installation first thing battery cables off on the truck that's that is a, a a must next we went ahead and removed the air intake nothing special on that we'll tell you on these later trucks uh, a lot easier if you just go ahead and remove the crossbar the intake comes out all in one shot I like to remove the inner fender well. The reason why I like to remove the inner fender well is draining the coolant. Um, this is, uh, the coolant has to be drained on this truck to be able to do this installation. It is much easier if you remove the inner fender well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just go ahead and show you on these LMLs how to remove the, or how to go ahead and start draining the coolant. I'll let Adam kind of get repositioned over here. Um, some guys like to use the lower line on the uh, on the surge tank. That's fine if you want to do that. I just dropped the um, I dropped the lower radiator hose. For me, it's just a little easier. And to do that, all you do is just go ahead and work the clip out. Let's something not tear it up. And it'll come right off there. Okay. And then once you break this vacuum you will have coolant flow everybody that's already been drowned by this once in their life knows so if you're wanting to keep your coolant not have to spend 40 or 50 dollars on coolant clean yourself a container and this is the easiest way to drain engine side we're going to start with getting a lot of these components out of our way first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the charge air pipe we're just going to loosen it up and I'll let Adam zoom in here. There's a locking ring on the charge air pipe on the LML trucks. This needs to go counterclockwise to loosen it and then uh, just prise backwards on it. There's notches cut in here, so you just, just take a screwdriver and move it to counterclockwise to till it stops. And then once you do that, you can kind of prise back on it and that loosens it up. Don't need to take that out, just need to get it loosened up. And then while I'm here, I'll just go ahead and do my resonator real quick, the turbo resonator box. There is a 10 metric bolt in the back that you will need to get to. I can see where my ratchet's positioned right there. So we'll go ahead and buzz it off. Same size bolt on either side. Just kind of pull up and then push forward. There is a connector on this AC line here. Just be careful of it and then you're clear. This charge air pipe uh, has got to be loosened up as well and out of your way. So we're gonna go ahead and do it real quick. 11 metric on this and we'll just loosen it up and dislodge it from the turbo. 
Then we're going to get the fuel lines behind us. We're not going to stay on this. We're just going to show you loosening it up and then we'll come back in breaking it away from the turbo. All right, so once this is loosened up, we'll disconnect it from the turbo. And then what we're going to be going after is our fuel lines. So the fuel lines have safety keepers on them. Push your safety keepers up. If you can do it with your hand, screwdriver underneath of them works good too. And then they, the safeties, once you lift up on the back, they just pull right straight out. So this is your delivery and your return fuel. Bigger for the delivery, smaller for return. Sorry, here's how the keeper looks. If you've got a fuel line disconnect kit, you're wanting to use the red and the blue one. That is, what is that, 3 eighths and a half inch? So I'll do my return first, which is gonna be the blue, and disconnect it. And then the red, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. Sorry, you can't see it with that charger in a pipe. Oh yeah. There it is. Perfect. Good. So we're gonna be working to remove the intake piece right now. I like to start on the passenger side of the engine here. Uh, we just wanna go ahead and get the throttle valve controller unhooked. I'll do that here real quick. And then we will, uh, the intake air heater, this controller wire right here. And then it'll come past the old dipstick once we get it. Then you flip the door open on the power wire for the intake air heater. That exposes that wire. So this will be a 10 metric, and we'll zip that off of there real quick. Pull this nut off, and the wire. And all we're doing is setting that side. We wanted to concentrate on this side because there's one bolt on here that's stupid to get to. And you can see underneath of here, there's a silver bracket, and I'm just gonna kinda zoom in on that. There's one bolt on here that we have to get that's a 10 metric, I think, yeah, 10 metric. And what I use is a long extension and a swivel socket. If you don't have this, use a universal and a, and a 10 metric, whatever it takes to get there. Long quarter inch drive is what it's gonna take. It's not super, super tight. You can move that hose. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm gonna move that hose and you just kind of got a feel for it. And once you get there, go ahead and loosen it up. Right here, I like to have a magnet so I can pull it out with the magnet. There it is. That's what we're looking for. All right, now there's two more bolts over here that are 13 metric. Sorry, that took so long, guys. Two more bolts here that are 13 metrics on the dipstick here and here, holding to that bracket, and then that gets us done on this side of the throttle valve assembly. <laughs> Now we can push our connector out. Perfect. All right, still working on the intake um, pipe here, so we're gonna disconnect the MAP sensor. 
then the uh, main wiring harness has got a uh, keeper in it on there so we'll just pop it out and then we are going to go after our 13 metrics first so we've got one two three 13 metric bolts that we'll be removing Your 13 metrics are going to be the two long ones for the back and then the other two that came off the old dipstick side are going to be the same size. So you'll know the two go to the back where it connects. Then we've got some 10 metrics we've got to get out here and honestly it probably might have needed to leave that one in there in this one. So this PCV pipe, we'll pull that bolt out. Yeah, that was different, so I'm going to leave it right here. Okay. Then we'll slide the other PVC out of the way. And we are disconnected and removed. Talk about um, the tensioner for just a second on LMLs. You can get to the tensioner to be able to take tension off of the belt from where we took the fender well out as well but if you've got one of these uh one of these serpentine belt tools that you can you can rent them from any auto part place you want to use the half inch to three eighths drive adapter and you can put it in the tensioner and it's kind of a friggin booger all right and then 3 8 drive ratchet and then what this does is this gives you enough articulation to where you can get your ratchet back out you don't have to have the ratchet and we'll talk about some of this stuff here in just a second but i don't want anything resting on my uh my fan my fan drive so pull it up towards you that gives you enough tension to take the belt off and then if you've got your ratchet position right you can release all the tension off of it and you can still get your ratchet out, which is what our goal was. So now we have the tension off of the serpentine bits. Now we're going to be moving our AC compressor, just like all of the other um, Duramax models that came before the LML, four bolts and it swings out of the way, which makes it really, really convenient. But you've got a few uh, wires on here you've got to get off. so pressure sensors there is one wire going over the alternator that has to be removed in this loom and then there is an ac i want to assume it's a power wire for the ac oh there's that catch that catch and then it moves right back i'll show how that did that i was actually pushing that down but on this one you just pull it back and then that wire comes out of your way then you can Lay this loom out. Oh, no, 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 no. One more, one more. Same kind of connector. Pull it back and it pulls on out. Now we can lay the loom out of the way. All right, and now we will remove the four 15 metric headed bolts for the compressor. Probably not going to have enough extension there. four bolts and then the AC compressor she will swing right out of the way Watch sensors and the hoses and 
voila. EGR crossover pipe is where we are now. Had will show you this. It comes from the up pipe and goes over to the EGR valve and we'll show you. But this has to come out next. Two bolts back here at the up pipe. I'm gonna move this coolant line out of the way. Uh, there is a bolt here and a bolt on the very top. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those really quick. Um, and I just reached over and saw my phone and I'd say it was probably a good time for my wife to call while we're videoing and screw everything up. So I'll turn that off. All right, 12 metric, couple extensions, swivel if you want to. And then that'll get you where you want to be on that. I'll have to break them with a hand ratchet. one loose you can go after the next one There will be a gasket back there, so you'll be watching for it to come out, but we're just gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts. All right, so time to go ahead and get the rest of the bolts out of this EGR crossover. Before we move forward, um, I like to take this little riser plate down that holds the dipstick and would have, uh, would have attached to the intake manifold as well, the intake runner. So it's two 13 metric bolts on it. You can loosen them up real good or just remove them however you want to do it. I'd like to remove it. And get that daggone plate out of your way. That will allow the pipe to come through much easier. At this point in this, what I try to do is I try to keep as many of the bolts and stuff with the systems that they go with. All right, now 13 metric bolt here, holding it down at the cooler. And then you have, I'll let Adam come back over here. You have your EGR pipe that will actually attach to, bolt to the EGR valve itself. You can see that right here. So two, two bolts on that. There'll be a gasket underneath of there as well. So. Now look at the orientation of your gasket. Let's see. All right, the tab was out towards me. I can't remember that. Now it's time to get the pipe out. I'll lay this. PCV line and just go ahead and pick this end up and get it clear of all my wires and then bring it right straight out from the back. Be really careful of the uh, fuel return lines here. There it is. Just kind of twist and pull. Real good time to look at this, make sure there's not a big time soot buildup in there. If there is, clean it out. Uh, that's just gonna be another restriction on you. I like to, at this point also, again, it's worth mentioning, these systems, the bolts that you're in, I like to take them, I like to just put them back together, just like they came out, and then I'll start laying them on the tailgate, that way I know the bolts that I've got and where they go. Time to get your EGR valve off now. This is your EGR valve assembly uh, actuator out on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all of our electrical connectors at the EGR valve. All right, and this wire loom has just got a standard it sits on. So that'll get it out of the way. 
All right, so 13 metrics here as well. A lot of 13 metrics on these trucks. Four bolts, and it gets the valve out of our way. Inboard bolts here, outboard bolts, depends on how you look at it, I guess. Then there's one hidden underneath of the valve. Same positioning and everything, just go ahead and buzz it off. Okay. We'll pull these two bolts out. And the valve will come off. So you've got a gasket on, the, uh, on both upper portions. I've got that one. Tabs go up. And the two long bolts. And then the short bolts. And don't forget about the little devil on the bottom because that one could be one of the ones that you drop in the runner because you're here. All right. And there is your valve out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit it back over here for just a second. Then I'm going to collect gaskets. So we had the one gasket here. And then both of the gaskets made it out onto that. That is not correct. We had one gasket to go, and I see it right there, Adam. All right there it is. Voila. All right, so you've got your two, you got your one lower gasket at the EGR cooler, then your two uppers that go into the intake pipe, and we will collect all of that and put that system back together. What we're after here is we are after the EGR cooler, the front EGR cooler. The front EGR cooler has got four bolts that attach it to the back EGR cooler, and this side below is a little bit tricky to get to. Um, the other constraint that we have on this truck is whoever the devil is that put this, um, put this engine together at the Duramax plant decided to leave the clamp on the coolant line directly below this facing up, the ears facing up. The ears facing up means I can't get to my daggone bolt with it. So, got to take the alternator out. Don't have to take the alternator all the way out here, but I've removed one of the 15 metric bolts from the bottom of the alternator. And you'll find that in GM's infinite wisdom, the second bolt on the alternator hits the fan shroud. So the fan shroud would almost have to be uh, unbolted and put aside you want to take your top bolt off or your top nut off the wire but what i'm going to do with this alternator is i'm just going to pry it up and out of the way up here beside of my cold air pipe that gives me the access i'm looking for directly like that so we're going to get this bungee corded up here and then we'll come back and show you getting the um getting the egr cooler off all right, we want to talk to you just a little bit about getting the EGR, the front EGR cooler off. So you're attacking four bolts on the EGR cooler here. There's two on the bottom, two on the top. There's a standard bolt here and a standard bolt here. Now, this gets a little bit tricky because of the access to this innermost 10 metric bolt. And I hope that you can see this. I'll move that wire harness for, for you. There's a clamp on that, um, on that coolant line. Yeah, let's put a light on it so they can see it. There's a clamp on that coolant line right there. Now, it just depends on what mood they were in at the Duramax factory, where that clamp is going to be. Mine was turned up, so we had to do a little finagling to get it turned down. So we're going to show you how to get that bottom bolt out. What I do is I take the alternator, I unbolt the front bolt on the alternator, as you can see right here, and then that lets me move the alternator out of the way, use a bungee cord to get it out of the way, and that gives me a, uh, an ability to, to get a 
quarter inch drive ratchet through here um, and right directly to that bolt. So let's go ahead and before you start removing your bolts, it's better off to just go ahead and remove the clamp on the line. And I grabbed the wrong pair of pliers here, but I want to try to get through it with what I got. I had a, I had the pair of pliers that I, I used for my clamp fiasco. So we'll try to main, we'll try to get through it with what we got here. I think I heard that line. <coughs> I think I heard that line let go at them, so if it hasn't, we will hit it with this real quick. Just working to dislodge that line before I start fighting it with cooler. Okay, now let's walk through all of our bolts. 12 metrics here, and get everything out. I'm gonna start on the driver's side. As soon as I find a battery. That's one of the 13s. Should have seen that, Adam. All right, now let's try it. All right, get these two bolts out of our way. One is longer, so we know the longer one goes to the driver's side. All right, so we're going to switch over to the 12. I'm gonna go ahead and do it with my quarter inch drive and I'll show you what we're doing here on it. Okay. All right, now for the bottom two bolts, here's where the fun begins. This is why we moved the alternator out of our way. And I'm gonna let Adam kind of get positioned here where he can see. So what we're using is an extension and a universal. And of course a quarter inch drive, 12 mil socket. I'm gonna go after the bad bolt first. So underneath of these fuel lines here and then adam will probably see it come out and once it's out it kind of drives itself right straight to the bolt and i can't see it all right i think i got it There it is. That's the bolt that was inserted by the devil himself. We'll go ahead and loosen it up. And then we will get to the next bolt, which you'll have to move your universal up between the rail feed line to get to it. This is, to me, this is probably and just as hard to get to honestly because the angle that it lays out you can get it with a wrench on the outside of it but you're already right here with this extension conglomeration that you made for your lower bolt so you might as well get it while you're there
All right. So both of them are loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this bolt out. Once you have all of your bolts out and um, we got our lower bolt out and showed you removing the gasket. What we're going to be working on now is getting all of the uh, the coolant lines dislodged and ready. There is a rear coolant line as well that we want to get to. So this is going to be uh, the upper or the lower on the unit coolant line, but there is a connection. It's hard to get to the connection at the cooler to make, so you want to disconnect it up here. Plus, there's a standard up there which keeps it rigid so you can manipulate it a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and get this clamp moved for us. And then I'll have to block the shot for just a second at them so I can get the hose loose. Let's go ahead and pull our front line off like so. I'm gonna start working to get this clear. to keep it upright keep the hose upright so it doesn't flood you out there what I wound up doing there was tilting this front end up and then here's your cooler out. all right we're going to remove the turbo mouthpiece now so the turbo mouthpiece has got a couple of sensors on it here we're going to remove the white connector sensor first just push it in and clip then I'm gonna let um, Hunter come around here and I want to show you the other sensor. The other sensor is on the back side of the PCV baffle. And this sensor, to release it, it is actually attached to the mouthpiece. So to release it, there is a, uh, there's a, just a little catch right there in the center of it. Just push it down and then that releases it. So now that's got our turbo mouthpiece ready to just kind of move over the there is a just a normal band clamp here on the turbo mouthpiece two and or a five sixteenths inch nut driver and we'll loosen it up and it's just got a normal clamp on it fight you just a little bit and I really don't know why All right. straight out and then just watch these wires here so now that you have access to it you just have to pop both of the wire looms off of the back be real careful with this because again they're attached to the mouthpiece so we'll that one and then we remove the white one as well. I know you can't see that. Actually on this one, I forgot you can slip it right straight up. Sorry, I forgot about that one. The white one you can just slip it straight up. And then this will actually just fold out of your way. PCV bath. Then it's got you exposed to take your Y bridge out. 
All right, time to take our Y bridge out now. So before you can do that, you have to take the clamp off of the turbo to get to one of the bolts. So what I do is I turn it down, turn it to where the clamp portion is down or the drive portion is down, loosen it up all the way, and then you can just kind of slide it out like that. All right, best way to get to these bolts is a 10 metric quarter inch drive swivel socket. And then just an extension there gets you to where you need to be. There's some of them you get to straight on, but I'll just kind of leave it all set up here the way I'm going like this. So this setup right here will get you all four, all, I'm sorry, all eight bolts. There's four on, two on top, two on the bottom, two on top, two on the bottom. Like I said, the extension of the swivel socket makes life so much easier if you have them. If you don't have them, I suggest you go out and get them before you start this job. So we're gonna go ahead and work to get the bolts out. While I'm talking this cross bridge, right here at the end of my fingers, the back two um, bolts for the Y bridge are actually nuts on studs. So when you remove them, you will have to use a universal swivel and a 10 metric deep well, and then a magnet to get the nut out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and lift our Y bridge out. Before the Y bridge comes out, we've got to unhook this temperature sensor. So this little green connector right here, just push it down it should separate and then it is attached to the wiring harness as well so what we can do there is pull straight up on the thing or release it from the mount and that one would release but that's all right all right, just pull straight out of the harness like that. And the crossover tube will lift straight up and just watch your coolant line here, which I have not removed yet, but it should clear it anyway. Up and out. We're gonna go ahead and start working on high side lines. So just talk to you a little bit about this. The two high side lines from the CP4 come from either sides of the barrel and plungers and feed right here and right here on the passenger side or right rail. Getting them out is um, your first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you're working on the high and low side lines. And it's a, it, it can be a little bit tricky, but uh, so we're gonna start with there's a 10 metric hold down here that holds to this cast iron piece. You'll see it when you get there. We're gonna go ahead and loosen that up and remove that. And then once we do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the, do the doser line. This is the doser line that feeds the ninth injector. Um, your new pump comes with a doser line on it. So, uh, but this portion is gonna be retained. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just loosen this up, remove the bolt out of it, and then what that's gonna do is just give us just a little bit of articulation in the doser line to where we can work here. So when you pull this banjo bolt out, you're going to want to make sure to put it and the seal in a safe place so that you can get back to them. We'll go ahead and pull the banjo bolt out and then we're gonna remove the seal because we will be reusing it as well. So and you don't wanna bend the dosing line, of course. It has a rigid mount right there, but just that little bit of movement right there goes a long way in being able to get to the rest of the lines. So next, we're going to remove the uh, rubber return hose side so we just wanna go ahead and do that. And it's just a little U-shaped line here. You'll get a different one that comes with the, with the fleece kit. So we just wanna break that line loose and hopefully it will come out for us without too much work. And I'll take the clamp off of the CP4 for the other side of it. Looks like it's going to want to go the other way. <laughs> I 
be real careful working around the FCA connection here. Just gonna bring that up just a little bit more. Alright, now. Line the base of the pump, get it moving, and then there's that. And that one's going to be stuck. that u-shaped line's coming out now say just a little bit about uh, make sure that you've got a rag down inside the intake after that's been exposed the wire bridge is out of it so now we're going to just loosen up these two 19 metrics on the back of the pump and then here's where the reason we're going to just loosen our dosing line slightly so that lets you get to that. And then that one's just going to be a little bit at a time. So we're going to cut right there while I work to get that loosened up. All right, now we're at the rail on those high side lines. So we'll just loosen those up and slow going here too because you only get a little bit of a turn of the wrench. It's good to have a couple different style of wrenches. I'll keep a, I don't have my 90 degree or 45 degree open ends with me today, but I've got a, I've got a, a, a line wrench, 19 metric line wrench too, that gives you a little bit of room. Let's see, you get just a little bit there, just a little at a time. All right, so here is the pack, ready to come out, should just wiggle right past, we get past the line, that was past the uh, thinger, so this uh, high side return line pack, this is of no use to you anymore. All right, we're going to remove the uh, turbo coolant line, and the reason why we're doing that is because we're chasing the balance line now. So the balance line is running from this head over, kind of under the turbo there, and over to the other rail over here. So you can't see it, but you'll be able to see it once we're bringing it out. So this coolant line has got to be removed. So start by undoing your clamp at the front. And then there is a 10 metric bolt that holds it to the turbo, which is right here. And that's all right. And so I'll, I'll uh, see if I can get this little swivel socket in there to it, and you'll see where my socket's going. How about that? I don't think it's ever going to go on the bolt. No better than this. You got to pick your battles, folks. You got to pick your battles. All right, but once this bolt comes out of the turbo here, there is a 19 metric or three quarter inch bolt actually bolts the pipe to the turbo. Now Adam's gonna have a little bit more trouble getting that shot for you, but you can just trust us. You follow the pipe back, you'll find the bolt. Once I get this stupid long bolt right here out. There's 
past that. Alright. I'm trying not to get my shoulder in the way. Best way to attack this is just up and over the actuator alleyway in the turbo there. So. And it's not super tight. All right, we've got the bolt loosened up the back. I got this line loosened up up here, so this will just slide off. And then you wanna bring the banjo bolt and fitting out all in one shot because there is a seal on there, just like so. All right, we wanna stop just a minute and, and do a little bit of talking because I kinda had a, a reality check with this because we realized that we were actually doing this as a mechanic would do it. We were trying to take less parts off to be able to do the job faster. And it's really not what this is about. This video is about how it's showing you um, everything that you're gonna be doing uh, as a vehicle owner in removing these components and whatnot. So we realized that coming into the lines. So Adam, jump up here and let's just kind of do an overview of where we're at on the lines. So. You, once you've removed the high side CP4 feed lines that feed the passenger side uh, fuel rail, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the balance line. We're going to be removing both of these low side lines. Both of the low side lines that we disconnected earlier in the video, the reason why they're coming out is because the balancing line does not come out underneath with the turbo on the truck if these lines do not come out. They just It just will not do it. So. What we're gonna do is we thought about the low side feed line that is proprietary to fleece that they built. We're gonna be showing that coming loose. So we're gonna go ahead and take the alternator out. Um, to do that, what you do, you know, we haven't taken the fan shroud off of this truck. You can take a couple of bolts out and just move it over to get the other alternator bolt out. And that's what we're gonna do. Excuse me, camera. That's all right, that's on me, Adam. These two uh, 13 metric headed bolts. You wanna make sure that you take the top one out too because the fan shroud is much more mobile once it's out. All right. And now that you have the ability to move it, just go ahead and loosen up the other alternator bolt. All right. And like I said, it just, the bolt will come right out past the shroud, then you go ahead and remove the alternator. Then you're looking directly at that feed line going to the fuel filter that we will be changing out. All right, there'll be a couple of camera shifts here, but what we're working on now is we're gonna be working on the fuel feed line coming from that feeds the fuel filter housing that we will replace with the one coming from the, um, coming with the, with the fleece kit so it goes right over here so we want to remove this bracket right here because there's a 13 metric bolt underneath it here you can get to it with a wrench doesn't need to be taken off necessarily but we're going to go ahead and pop it off for the sake of the video here so the two wiring harness that are here you're going to want to take off the wiring harness that is on there for the alternator and then this big crossover wiring harness get it out of your way now an animal back up here just a little bit this uh, bracket has two bolts on it. They're located right here to remove it. So we'll go ahead and spin it out real quick. that gives you access to the line end right here that we're looking for the hold down then you have another hold down here we'll take this balancing line we'll unbolt it here lift it up just a little bit unbolt it from the back of the pump and that'll get it out of our way so next before I start tackling these standards I want to loosen up 
the fitting in the valley. The fitting in the valley is a 7 8 and a 15 16 is to hold it. So to get it on the back side of it on the 15 16 side, start back here on the skinny end of the line and then just work up with the open end of your wrench. All right, and then I like to use line wrench on the other end and it's 7 8 So. Just hold it to you. All right. And just go ahead and start that line out. And the line that you are removing is the line that will be turning. So you'll have to get creative to get that off. And I'm not going to spend time on that. Off. That That's a simple thing. You see it right there the way it is. So that'll just disconnect. But let's show you how to get to the other bolts here. So the balancing line, what you're gonna wanna do with it is you're going to want to remove the balancing line at the rail right here. Now the balancing line feeds, all of your CP4 feeds to your passenger rail. Then the passenger rail via the balancing line feeds the driver's side rail. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove this nut. And then there is a standard on the balancing line here that's got a 10 metric bolt in it. We're gonna remove it. Like so. And now what that lets us do is that's gonna let us take the balancing line and we'll be able to pick up on it. Now there's one more bolt in the back of the pump. It's another 10 metric. We'll remove it. I've already loosened it up. So, yeah. So, and it doesn't go crazy far. It just goes enough to where you're going to be able to get in there and get a wrench to this bolt on the standard and then 13 metric here and then remove the fuel line. So we're not gonna take up a bunch of air time showing you that, we'll show it to you coming out. All right, we're gonna show this line coming out here. This is the feed to the fuel filter. So we're gonna unscrew it right here at the bottom. All right, you'll get a little bit of residual fuel in the valley of the motor. Take a uh, the box end of a wrench and it can go right between the balancing line and this little standard that it's on here and the bolt should scoot right past it you can lift your balancing line up if need be come on out of there all right and then once it's loose it'll come slide right past it right there all right and then again we have another 13 metric right here this one we can get to with a ratchet and socket. And then we can slide our fuel line off, which I hope Adam can see that pretty good. Yep, there you go. All right, so a little bit of fuel there with it coming out. is our line loose and ready to come out so it will just kind of go past our balancing line and you want to start it in the valley above those two lines and then it comes right out so now that you've got your low side feed line that goes to the fuel filter taken out it's time to take out the other two low side lines now the low side supply line is actually going to come out of the truck it's easier just to get it out of your way but this low side return we're going to flip it up and get it out of our way because there is a injector return line that attaches to it that you don't want to take off there so to get these low side lines off obviously this uh, hose needs to be disconnected from the passenger side fuel rail there is a clip down here in the valley the clip down here in the valley has a has a metal standard on both sides of it the reason why this is significant is because when you take these clips off both sides the one in the valley is going to have the standards on both sides for it. so you just got to remember that's where it goes 
I like to take this intake stud out. This is an external six, I believe. I like to take it out because you don't have to pop the lines over it. It just makes it a lot easier. So just remove that real quick for you. Now, I'm kind of coming over here to the other side of the truck. I'm gonna let Adam swing over so we can see it. Oh, actually, you know what? Adam, come back. Come back for just a second. I apologize. Shots there's, <laughs> there's two bolts right here that attach both the return and the supply low side lines to the uh, to a standard off the intake here. So we're gonna remove both of those. They're both the same size, so you don't need to do anything funky there. All right, Adam, now you're ready to come around. All right. Then we want to remove this clip right here on the standard. And we take it off. Now this may not be necessary, but it's what I do. I think it's easier this way. We're going to remove the riser for the fuel lines. So there's two 13 metric bolts. There's one here, and then there's one in the back. You just kind of trace your way to them and remove those bolts. Of course, you want to kind of make a mental note of where the wires are. I know that they're underneath of those lines or, and underneath the bracket, so we're gonna roll that out. Roll the bracket out. So just like so be mindful of the wires and be mindful of the lines the brackets out now adam you can come back around and we're going to show this low side line coming out now the low side lines actually work underneath of the balancing line this is the balancing line the crossover line whatever you want to call it so to get these out i want to start with the supply side first and you just work it back and forth best you can. I've got the, the balancing line loose at the rail over there, so it gives me a lot more slack, so just, just work it up. And then you're just kinda trying to get it twisted to where it comes out. So there is your supply line out. Okay, now the return, again, as I told you, the return has a rubber line on the back of it here that is the uh, that is another return line that ties in with it. This line just does not need to be removed. It can totally be moved up out of the way right here. All we're doing is trying to create a path for the CP4 to have coming out. Now, we're going to talk to you about a bolt that was put in this Duramax by the devil himself. Satan, Lucifer, whatever you like to refer to him as, the devil put this bolt in this Duramax. Adam, come over here and we're gonna show it to him. What we're doing now is we're going to be removing the crossover line or the balancing line. There is a 10 metric bolt that is located right, I can't either. It is right here. If you follow the balancing line, you will find it. There's one 10 metric bolt that's right there. I'm actually touching the standard. That has to come out because the balancing line has to be moved. All right, there we are. So you can kind of see where my hand is here. And I'm gonna point right directly under the actuator for the turbo, the housing barrel there, right directly underneath of that. There's a standard for, or a, a, a clip for the for the for the crossover line that has to come out do it however you do it i take a 10 metric slink in there work at it work at it work at it and then pull it out with a magnet that's the only way you can do it all right so right now adam let's show what we do with the crossover line you'll come over to this side sorry about that i should talk that's my fault adam that was my fault dynamic shooting all right guys now we're gonna show, so the back clip off the off the balancing line is out. There's a bolt here in the valley. We're gonna remove this bolt. At that point, there is a line clip on the back of the CP4 for the balancing line. We're gonna remove that bolt. Then there is a bolt here at this little standard 
for the balancing line. We're going to remove that bolt. I think you guys are catching on the pattern here. And then, last but not least, we're going to unscrew the balancing line from the passenger side fuel rail. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just flip this clip out of our way, just like so. Then we're gonna pull up on the balancing line, just like so. And we're just gonna get it out of our way. All we've done is pull the balancing line up to where we can push the CP4 back and get it where it needs to be there. If you need to, you can't, because it will not come out from underneath of the turbo with the turbo on the truck. So you just roll it up just like so. What I did there was after I pushed it back, after I pushed it back, I just rolled it up over this line right there. So that gives me perfect clearance to get my CP4 up and out of here. So this is the portion of our video that we're going to talk about removal of the CP4. So um, everything that we're going to be doing here is just going to be prep work for that. A um, couple of electrical sensors on the, on the CP4 that you have to remove. So your FCA right here, you'll want to go ahead and unplug it. And it's easy. You just squeeze it and unplug it and then just kind of get it out of your way. There is a temp sensor on the bottom. I will unplug it once the, once the CP4 comes out. Then we have a fuel line right here that is going to uh, be disconnected. And then we need to get this dosing line off. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead and remove the dosing line from the standard that it is on. And it's just another 13 metric that we remove here, so just slide past Adam and we're just gonna go ahead and remove it. It, it. it stays attached to the pump. You're gonna wanna keep your hardware here because you are gonna be putting a new dosing line on coming from your CP3. I quit, I quit on the ratchet too early on that. And then just slide that past, then that'll give you uh, room to go on there. And then we're going to remove this fuel feed line. So just got a clamp on it. We want to bring your clamp up as clear from the pump as you can. I'm going to get it budged with my pliers here. I'm going to try not to. Try not to jab at him right in the camera. Okay, I'm gonna smooth that back just a little bit more. All right, there's the line off here. So we're gonna get a little bit of residual fuel from there. I'll clean that up out of the valley. Um, so that's going to have us pretty good shape right there. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and remove the oil filler neck. And these are more 13s here. So we're going to go ahead and remove the top 13 metric bolt. What this is giving us, what this is going to do is this is going to allow us access to uh, pop the CP4 out. So, remove this bolt. Then we will remove the bottom one. May not have enough extension there. Wait, that dude. And then the old filler neck just pops straight up. Just 
like so. So it's time to remove the four bolts that hold the CP4 to the front cover of the motor or to the block of the motor, I apologize. This is the fleece adapter that comes with your kit that is the adapter for the CP3 uh, pump for these LML trucks. You can kind of look at the orientation of where the bolts are on these. You've got two at the bottom here and then two at the top, or the two at the top are the wider ones. Um, these bolts are accessible with um, the fan drive and everything on the truck. Uh, you just have to sneak through it. I use a quarter inch drive and a 13 metric uh, shallow well socket. And we'll kind of show you that. I'm not gonna be able to show you the bolts uh, uh, necessarily, but I will be able to kind of show you the process of getting them off. The first thing that we want to do is I like to remove this pulley. Uh, this pulley right here is is kind of in your way it can actually stay on but for the shots um, here that we're going to be looking for i'm going to go ahead and remove it and just take it off and actually once we pull this pulley out you'll just about be able to see some of our bolts. Okay, that's got a little keeper on the back of it and it's actually got a washer on the front side of it. So that's one, one assembly there. Let's set up here my part straight. All right. Now, I'll try to take my light and kind of squeeze by it. And if you can see there, you can't see the top bolt, but I've got my finger on it. And then you've got a bottom bolt right there that are accessible with everything on the truck with fan drive on it and everything. So if you need to, you can just take that rubber line, that rubber coolant line and move it out of your way. You should be able to get to it. So we're gonna get it set up on quarter inch drive and we're gonna get the two passenger side bolts out of the CP4. All right, and again, not gonna be able to see a whole lot here, but I'll show you what we use. So the top two bolts we can get with this, uh, this quarter inch drive extension. I like to use one of the locking extensions if you can, that way you don't lose your socket. The two top, top bolts on the CP4, they're pretty easy. I mean, honestly, they're pretty straightforward. You just kinda, the, the top one on the passenger side is kinda, if you look just right, you'll be able to see it between the water neck. So, and these aren't, these bolts aren't tight enough that you can't not tackle them with a quarter inch drive. So I got that one loose. Have your magnet ready to make sure you catch the bolts. When it's time for them to come out, like so. All right. Then we're going to do our top one on the driver's side. And shake through there and just. Feel for it with your finger first. You got it. And here. And I don't. The, the water neck crossover is kind of here, but if you angle your socket just right, the socket will come past it and the bolt will too. So the bolt comes right straight out. All right, there's two. All right, we're gonna talk about our passenger side bottom bolt first. So there is on the coolant crossover, there is the beginning of this rubber line that comes down. And the way you get your socket to it is you have to use a smooth socket and a 13 metric 
just like so. All right, and what I do is I just go ahead and take something and get underneath of the hose, like so. Make sure I don't poke a hole in the hose, and then I can just, just sneak by it with a socket and get in there and get it on, and we're good to go. Move my light for just a second. This bolt will come all the way out. So we'll just loosen it all the way up here. And once you get to a certain spot, the socket will be up against that hose. So what you want to do there is you just want to take your take take your hand, lift that bolt up, and just keep the keep the bolt coming past it. there what I did was I took my extension off of the off of the socket so that left my socket to where I couldn't get it out so what we do in that instance is just pick the hose back up with our tool and then we can come right out that bolt can come out if you want it out it doesn't have to come out it can totally stay right there uh, right where it is and be completely harmless all right same thing on the driver's side bottom cp4 bolt you're going to be going right through the crook of this uh, coolant crossover neck now it's going to have the socket up kind of at an angle but if you have a 13 metric excuse me quarter inch drive swivel socket that's great i, I don't have one handy here it'll get you in there and get you flat on the bolt you got to be super super careful here and just make sure you get good thread engagement and go ahead and, and loosen the bolt up. One thing I did not mention on the passenger side when we were doing the bottom bolt, what you can do with these bolts where both of these bolts are going to come out so far and then they're going to come in contact with these coolant crossovers, what you can do is you can actually just leave the bolts in place and run them out as, as, as far as you can. Uh, and, it, and if you want to, go ahead and unbolt this coolant crossover right there and flip it out of your way if you want to. Uh, we just don't think it's, it's just 100% necessary for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this bolt out until it gets close to, to hitting the coolant crossover. And then what I can do is as my CP4 falls out in the engine valley, uh, once you push it backwards a little bit, I can pull, pull this the rest of the way out with my fingers. Once you pull it out just a little bit, you can loosen the bolt the rest of the way up but this bolt is going to clear you just have to start it with your fingertips so the driver's side bolt is going to disengage from the cp4 perfectly you can hear it hitting the crossover so it does not need to come out it does not need to come out and then the other bottom one is going to make contact as well and it doesn't need to come out either and i'm going to check it so if it's loose, it's not going to be entirely loose. So we're going to move the CP4 and then we'll get it the rest of the way loose. We're ready to push the CP4 out. I want to get this out of our way so we can see here. So to, we just use a prize bar or a pry bar. Goes right here into the oil filler neck. And then this nut and drive shaft, that's actually the CP4 drive shaft. We're going to put that pry bar in there and we're going to put a little pressure on the cp4 and you can 
You can see it start to move here in the, in the engine valley. And there she goes. She is loose. I'm gonna grab it here real quick. And let's go ahead and shake it a few times. And voila, there she is in the valley. She is out. So in preparation of getting the CP4 out, we're gonna go ahead and remove the other side of the feed line. That just gives you a little bit of extra clearance there. And then I, I just, it always bothers me about the doser line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sneak through here and I'm gonna remove, there's a 13 metric bolt on the valve cover there. It's right here. I'm gonna remove that bolt so the doser line, I can get it and I can push it out to another. I can go to another side or move it out of my way completely there. So that's what we're gonna do here for just a second. I'm gonna leave everything attached on it and I'm just gonna work through on this, this bolt. All right, on the doser line, all I did was I just loosened that bolt up enough to where I can get the doser line out of my way. So this CP4 assembly is ready for removal. And just put the tail up. And keep working at it. So here's a temp sensor on the back of the CP4 pump. We're gonna remove the wire for it. That temp sensor actually comes out of the pump. I'm gonna remove it and then CP4, she is removed. Once you have your CP4 out, there's a few things that you have to dismantle from the CP4 pump in preparation for uh, installing it onto the CP3 pump. But I'm gonna tell you one thing that I'd like to see you do and, and, and it's suggested is that you take out the, uh, the FCA on this, especially if you're doing this conversion because you've had a failure, you suspect a CP4 failure and maybe you're gonna just try to skimp through and just change out a CP4. You're not gonna be able to do that unless you check and make sure that you haven't had debris go through the rest of the system. The screen that's on the FCAs in these, if they have any debris on it, I'm gonna show you the screen there. If you have any debris on that screen or that FCA, you're gonna have to stop right there. That means that you've had debris go through your fuel system and you are going to wind up needing more than just a CP3 conversion. You're going to need a uh, fuel kit where you're going to be replacing rails, injectors, uh, quite a few things there. We talk about that in a couple different videos, but just a good thing to do. If you're just doing this for preventative maintenance, you're probably not going to run into that. Hopefully that you don't. So on your stock CP4, you're going to need to remove the, uh, the temperature sensor from the back of it, and you're also going to need to remove the gear from the front of it. So I'm going to show you removing both of those. So you turn the pump over here. This is your temperature sensor that needs to come out. You use a three quarter inch wrench for this. Um, just loosen it up. It's not crazy tight. Just go ahead and remove it and set it off to the side somewhere. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, remove the gear. You're gonna have a flood of fuel come out of this from the open orifice that we've got after we remove that, of course. So I'm gonna wipe some of this fuel up here. 
Then we're going to remove the gear off the front. All right. So this is a um, inch and a sixteenth. And what I like to do is just take a strap wrench to hold the gear. Don't try to hold the gear with your hand. You'll get your hand eat up out of the deal. Remove the nut from the front of it. All right, now remove the gear. Now you'll see on a couple of different installation videos that you can just uh, use soft jawed vise and jig that up and that will let you to allow you to run the nut down to where it's just about flush with the shaft so say right there and then just give it a good sharp wrap and that'll knock the gear off but here at thoroughbred diesel right now we are vice poor we have successfully tore up our vice and we are vice poor. So I am going to attempt to do this with a two jawed gear puller, which should work just fine. So you'll wanna make sure that the gear puller itself is underneath of the gear well. Adam's gonna hold the pump body. He'll just support it at the bottom there. And then we'll use the two jawed puller to pull, pop the gear off here. So you want to pay attention to your orientation of the gear as you see it here. So the gear, there is a thin side and then you have a tall side to the gear. The tall side is going to go back towards the pump. Also, this pump is timed. So there is a keyway on the gear of the CP4. The CP3 does not need to be timed so this can go on in any position, however, the depth of this has to be right for correct gear lash. So the tall side of this gear actually has to point back towards the CP3. So brought the uh, SNS CP3 over here and you're gonna want this oriented so your FCA is gonna be up in the engine. So I'm just gonna use that as reference in the picture. And first thing you're going to want to do, you have a package that comes with your kit, with your fleece kit that has two O-rings in it, a small one and a large one. The smaller of the two O-rings goes on the body of the CP3 pump, just like so. You'll want to lubricate it just a little bit. Then you're going to want to orient your fleece adapter for the CP3 adapter. You're going to want to orient it with this uh, standard up and it will line up with a correspond with a hole in the CP3 there. So just kind of get it where it needs to be. And then make sure you're not creeling the O-ring on the back side. And just go ahead and give her a push down. She'll snap right into place. Good. All right. Then your next O-ring. This is the oil O-ring for the outside. And we're going to want it to go on the uh, in the first groove, the groove closest to the outside right here. So we'll want to lube this one up as well. Then we're going to go ahead and slide it on the pump. Again, it goes in that first that first notch set. All right. Once you have your adapter plate on, you just want to flip it over and. I just use a three quarter inch drive socket and I just flip it over. And what we're doing is we're lining up the plate. We're lining up the plate here to put our bolts on. And in your hardware bag that fleece provides for you, there's three bolts in there. You'll want to tighten those up to 15 foot pounds. We'll drop all three of them in. They go, one goes right here at the top and then the other points of the triangle here. And the whole time you're working on this, you really want to be conscious of what's going on with this doser line. Don't bend it, don't cut it off, don't loosen it up, all those things. Just watch what's going on and, and uh, you should be fine.
The threads on the aluminum are, as you know, are very, uh, it's, it doesn't take much to mess them up. So if your bolts aren't going great, like these aren't, I want to tell you to flip it back over. Pull your cover off. And then you're just going to want to thread them in from the back. There may be an instance where you need to chase it or something like that. I doubt it. They do, Fleece does a very good job of their quality checks. So I'm just going to check all three of those holes. Make sure they're good to go. felt good. Do it a little bit different this time. I'll line it up here on top. Snap it down. And then I will thread them through the bottom. And then the last one, we'll have to turn it back over on it. So, do that. <clears throat> All right, that made it a lot better. All right, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll go back through and I'll torque those down to, to 15 foot pounds. It's a, that's a critical torque there. You don't want to overdo it because, again, don't want to strip the threads out in the aluminum. All right, time to replace our gear. So remember what we said. The top portion of the gear goes back towards the CP3 pump. There is no dry, there is no keyway on this, so it does. it's not timed again. So we'll go ahead and pop that on there. And then hit her just a little bit of impact and should run the gear on down. All right, and then your next thing that you'll be doing to your pump is putting in the supplied fuel feeds that come from fleece. All right, so first off, we're gonna do a smaller one, the 3 8 one, which is gonna be return, and make sure that your sealing washer is on there. We'll just go ahead and screw it into the pump body. It goes into the cast iron portion of the pump. And then the back side of the pump is going to be your fuel supply or this half inch uh, feed adapter that comes. So you just pull the plug out of the back of it and then install again. Same thing here. Make sure everything's clean and just screw it into the body of the pump. And with that done, our CP3 is ready to be installed in the truck. All right, time to drop our CP3 in. So you just want to make sure that you've got your bolts um, torqued onto your adapter plate. You want to make sure that your doser line is up here. You want to make sure that you've got your fuel fittings in, all the things before you go in. Get down there, clean the face of everything out, get all your residual fuel out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the valley of the engine. So uh, try to do it with dry hands too, because I have been doing this before and wind up dropping a dag on CP3 because I got grease on my hands or something like that. So let's start in, and you want to make sure that that uh, that temperature line is up and out of the way as well because that can hinder you going back in too. So. And believe it or not, you really have a pretty good shot with the CP3 coming back in than you do. So you want to make sure that you're up correctly and what you're going to do with the, the 
a CB3 pump is you're just going to work it back and forth, applying pressure to it to get it in. You don't want to pull it in with the bolts because, again, this is a metal, this is a, an aluminum housing here. So you just want to make sure that you're got it in a position to where you can push it straight in. All right, CP3 pump is in the truck now. I want to talk to you just a little bit about the specifics of what you need to do before you go ahead and uh, tighten up your, your front four bolts. So like we told you, when, when you're uh, inserting the CP3 pump, you're just going to want to use plenty of um, uh, plenty of, uh, of grease on the, on the O-ring of the gear and get the CP3 pump all the way to the front cover. You do not want to draw the CP3 pump up with the bolt hole, with the bolts um, in the front cover. You can do damage there if the gears aren't meshed up uh, or lashed correctly. Uh, you could bust a gear, a lot of stuff that you don't want, okay? So you want to make sure that you get everything lubed up and you're straight on with CV3 pump and then just push it forward and, until you're good to go. Then you're going to just want to tighten up your four bolts. But before you do that, you're going to want to check a couple of things. First off, what I like to do is your wiring harness for your FCA and then what eventually will be your temperature sender. You want to make sure that they are not going to be pinched by the front cover or, or by the CP3 pump when it comes up. This wiring harness comes up through here. It's be real, real easy to pinch. So just make sure that it's clear of that adapter plate. There's really not a whole lot Adam can show you there. And then the dosing line, we want to talk about it. The dosing line should be free and not pinched by the front cover or from by the CP3, CP3 pump as well. You want it to kind of go out towards the front and then that way it can make a long sweeping turn back to its mounting location that won't get it in a pinch and kink it to where it doesn't have flow to it. So those are the two things that you're going to want to look out for when you're going together. You shake this and you make sure that it's lashed into the gears. If you don't feel comfortable with that, what you can do is you can actually go down on the harmonic balancer and put a uh, 36 metric 12 point on there and turn the motor over because this is not timed. Make sure that everything is, is, is all gears are meshed correctly. We're good to go here. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these front four bolts up. 18 metric on the torque, or 18 foot pounds on the torque, sorry. So now let's talk about installing our CP3. Number one of the first things that you're going to run into here is your fuel feed line is going to be changing from this little U to this L-shaped line that is provided to you in the fleece kit. Now I'm going to tell you the FCA connection that you're going to make right here, and I'm going to kind of get let Eric or let Adam get lined up on it. Your FCA connection is this wiring harness is going to be just a little bit tight. So you're going to want to try to move it and try to get yourself some relief on that. But you're going to that FCA right there. But as you can see from the shot, there's a little bit of interference with this fuel feed pipe. So we're going to show you how to get around that. <laughs> so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to loosen both of these 13 metrics. Both of these 13 metric bolts that hold this fuel feed line down. Okay, this is going to give you access, and there's another one up here on the rail here. This is going to give you access to be able to move everything around and get it where you need it to get. You don't need to take it off, you just need to get it to where it can articulate and move around. All right, so now that that's done, you're going to want to take your FCA connection and you're going to want to bring it over and, like I said, just bring yourself some slack with you as you go. And then just line your FCA connection up like so. Are you pulling on it? And then go ahead and snap it into place. Okay. Pull from the back of the wire, not pulling too hard, just giving you a little bit of relief there and push it until it clips. Okay. Now, this fuel feed line, this is the second most important thing here. So your fuel feed, the L portion of it is going to go on the back of the pump, but the other portion is going to be going to here. So once you put it on the pump, it's there to stay. So you don't want to do that. You want to do this other side first. So turn your pump, your hose and your clamp the way you want them. Keep this line loose, just like we talked about here. You're going to want to go ahead and put your line on real carefully, kind of sneak your clamp past two. 
and there you go. Now you don't want to be pinching that hose or anything like that. When you set that back down in there, when you tighten it down, you're going to want to be pulling that line to keep it clear of everything else. Then you're going to turn it to where it just about lines up with your CP3 pump, and then you can stab it right there. So that's the way we'll turn that to where it doesn't kink, like so. And then we'll install it right onto the CP3, like so. So, and that is a push to lock fitting, so that does not need a clamp. And we will clamp this right here, but we have an extra clamp that is, comes in the kit, so we can go ahead and install it as well. Um, we wanted to cut into the wiring harness portion of our video. This is going to look a little bit weird to you because we're farther along in the install, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to come back to this and show the wiring harness. So inside of the CP3 conversion kit, Fleece sends you a CP3 uh, FCA actuator harness extension. And what we had with this was the if you try to run the original harness, OE harness, back to the CP3, it's just a little bit tight. So Fleece sends this really nice extension. And what you do there, and we'll install it while all of the uh, lines are on, save for the supply line. But uh, you just go ahead and push that in until it clicks on your CP3, and then hook it back in to your, uh, to your stock harness until it clicks as well. And then you can leave this up and out of your way. Uh, if you, as you add other lines, you know, it can go where it needs to go, uh, as long as it's not rubbing against anything like that. And then your fuel supply tube, I'm just going to show this being popped back on while the harness is on there. It will sneak right past the electrical portion and hook right up. So you're good to go on that. So that is the little wiring extension, really nice, uh, little feature of this CP3 conversion kit. All right, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're gonna to want to go ahead and bolt down your dosing line that comes from the CP4 here. Now again, remember, we wanna make sure that everything's loose on it and that it doesn't, have, it doesn't have any pinches or kinks in it. And then we just turn it back and it goes back to its original spot here. And we will go ahead and reinstall our bolt and um, after this, I'm going to tighten. The, I'm just going to put my bolt in here as placeholder. I'm going to leave the dosing line unattached, and I'm going to leave it loose where I brought where I loosened it up over here at the valve cover. The reason why I'm going to do that is I've got other lines that need to go in here. I may need to move that line just to fuzz, so I'm going to leave it loose. All right, this is our balancing line and we're ready to put it back in position, but I want to talk to you just a little bit. The instructions for Fleece's uh, kit here say to cut this standard off of the line and you can do that. That's just fine. We find that when you install this balancing line that it actually doesn't uh, hinder anything. So we leave it right on and I'll show you where it winds up residing. It doesn't, it doesn't come into play at all. So your balancing line, you just want to make sure that what I like to do when I get ready to flip it back over, I put it in at the passenger side rail and I already have it inserted into the rail over here, which you can't see, but it's good and loose like this. And then what I do is I'll just back over this front standard just like so. And then I try to keep it away from that FCA line and then into the uh, passenger side line itself. Now you have a standard here that will line up eventually, but I'll snap everything into place. Then look, see where I'm at. My bottom one is lining up. Of course, I'm lined up back here. And then the devil bolt itself back here at the head, that position is lined up as well. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. You don't wanna over tighten these lines, about 22 foot pounds is all they get. And then we'll tighten down this standard here as well. Before you tighten your balancing line at the driver's side fuel rail, you're going to want to install the fuel supply line. Forgot to mention that in the last clip. So before you tighten it down at the rail, you want to go ahead and just loosely install this fuel supply line because it goes underneath of the line. And our shot's not going to show it, but you're going to know it when you're in the truck. So to get it started in there, you just want to back your intercooler pipe out just a little bit and start it kind of towards the turbo there 
and just keep working it till it falls down in just like so you don't have to attach it to anything just yet it'll go in there in just a little while don't get excited about that but we want it in there before we tighten down our balancing line all right it's time to put our low pressure fuel line uh, standard bracket back on back here because we're pretty well done i've still left the balancing line uh, the balancing line loose so i don't want to tighten it down until we get everything in this area done so we're going to go ahead and bring the bracket in the bracket comes in from the back to come around everything now remember that you've got a fuel line in here that you're getting past and you're also getting past the uh, wires for the sensor there so we're gonna so now this wire here right here behind the balancing line that runs along the whole rifle of the of the valve cover that wire is going to need to go in front of that standard so that gets you where you need to be now one of your low lines will have to go over it and there you go a little bit of finagling it'll go in there just be mindful of the fuel line don't get the fuel line caught in a crimp and the wire is going to the sensor back here for the turbo and then you're reinstalling the two 13 metric bolts Put bolts in, then we'll cut. How about that? Okay. We'll show them putting the bolts in, so you know, guys, know this that we ain't, we ain't skipping out on this. Yeah, I had to move my arm for you here in just a second. It's uh, I don't know if you noticed the theme of this job, but uh, there's not a lot of work room to work on this. It uh, really, really tight. That's it. All right, there you go. So there's your standard lineup. Again, everything is loose until we get the rest of our bolts in. All right, we're going to go ahead and start putting in our bolts for our low side fuel line. So remember, there's two bolts that go over here on the driver's side valve cover, and we'll start those. And again, we're going to leave these loose. You want to leave everything loose, all the bolts. You want to get everything lined up and in until you get to the point of the air intake crossover and then once everything is in and you're satisfied with clearance then you'll go back and you kind of tighten everything down or you will tighten everything down excuse me but fleece sends us a new line low side line so we're going to want a little bit of articulation here so we're going to go ahead and put our uh, rubber u-shaped line on the rail the return on the rail here There's that, all right, and then lift that loose. So now we want to go ahead and catch everything on the clamps. So the clamp with your standard and the the uh, uh, the bushing and the one standard goes on the back side over here, and we'll just lay it on there. Okay. Clamp does not go good. All right, and we'll just snug it down, and then we will use this bushing for the bottom one. The bottom has the one that has the two standards on it. I'm gonna sneak right past you, Adam, to get it. And there we go. Again, we're gonna leave everything loose here until we get this all in here and ready to go. Next thing that we're gonna put in in our 
in our puzzle piece that is LML conversion is the new line that Fleece sends us for supply. Now this is going to be for the OE line if you if you're retaining the OE housing. Uh, it's going to fit back in all of the normal locations where the old line went. So we'll go ahead and show you how to sneak this in here. I got one of these bolts I left it in here. So it's kind of going below the balance line right here and then it goes to its standard right there and right there then it's going to meet up in the valley at the line so what you're going to want to kind of do is line it up with your low side line kind of get everything made it up there then you want to bring your hold downs you want to bring them where they need to be and then at this one as well so everything lines up here the clamps they slide to get you where you need to be but yeah there that is and this is the reason why we leave everything loose so lines like this can get to the homes that they need to be so we'll tighten everything up here you want to make sure that you tighten this because now now is the time to tighten it don't don't wait on this get this tight the supply line in the valley here I'll run it up and I'll let Adam see it real quick but everything else needs to stay loose Next, we're going to install the, high, the new high pressure feed line coming from your CP3 that's going to feed the rail. Uh, this is included in your kit as well. So we're going to go ahead and line it up and I'll show you it goes into the second port from the front. So you just want to go ahead and get it lined up in here. I like to take it on the rail side and tighten down the rail. The, these, the CP3 the CP4 rails or the piezo style rails, I'm going to call them. I like to have, if on this side of it, I like it engaged on this side, and then I can kind of work it over on the CP3 a little bit easier. That's just the way I do it. I feel like it seals a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and we'll install it on the CP3 end as well. And then you're going to have an open port on your, L, on your LML pasture side rail fleece includes the plug for this as well so you just put the dummy plug down in there and it'll seat and then you put the cap over it and screw it down and then remember you just don't want to over tighten these lines 22 foot pounds is all they need on them so uh, just tighten them down because if you over tighten them you're going to have a problem with with leaks so we're at a point now to where we've got everything mocked up. Oh, you know what? This line is probably ready. So we can go ahead and do our doser line as well. The new um, s, s pump is going to come with a new bolt and a new washer or a new ceiling washer with it. So you'll just go ahead and line your dosing line up and get your washer on. We'll go ahead and start our banjo bolt for it. A little bit of pressure on it. And it'll take right off. see why I had a bracket wasn't clearing back there sorry all right so then we'll tighten that down as well again do not over tighten will cause leaks but we're good to go there as well so we're going to go through tighten everything down now I want to talk on the torque on the doser line now this is 89 inch pounds on this 
torque this one's going to be uh, a good a critical torque for you so you're going to want to make sure that you get it torqued correctly so the last piece of our um, of our installation when it comes to our cp3 conversion is this return line that fleece sends us now this is a preformed hose that they send uh, to take us from the factory return to the CP3 return right here. So we're gonna show you how that starts. Just start the preform of it on the factory side. And what you're gonna wanna also do is you're gonna wanna also have your clamps on it first. But we'll go ahead and run this down on the factory return line side. Pretty good. Let's get a clamp on there. Okay, and then I'll usually start it with the U up and then I've got my clamps on here as well. So then what we're doing is we're going to move the preformed line under the high side line like so, and then down to the CP3 return. Just watch your wiring harness here and I'll get my hands out of the way in just a second for you Adam. And that goes right on. So you can see here, a return line is clearing both the high side line and that low side line. So that preform hose makes that possible. At this point now, all we do is we bring our clamps down, tighten both clamps up, and this has our CP3 conversion side of it down. This is the point in your installation that you want to go back through and you want to check all of the bolts that you uh, unhooked, your bolts for your supply and return line factory size setup, the balance line bolts here and there, Check, recheck your balance lines. There is one bolt that we loosened here for this dosing line. We just loosened it to have some access to it. We want to tighten that back down. Um, you just want to double check all your work here before you go with buttoning up the rest of the truck. All right, everything is gonna to start um, to close up really quickly now on our, our reinstallation. So what we wanna talk about now is the fuel temperature sensor that came out of the CP4 pump. The fuel temperature sensor that comes out of the CP4 pump has to be re-hooked into the original wiring harness it came from on the truck. Uh, if, the tr if the truck is not able to sense what it thinks is a fuel temp, uh, it will throw codes, it will go into uh, lint mode or D-rate or whatever. So what I do is I just go ahead and hook that up. The washer doesn't come off there, so it's fine if it wants to stay on the thing. Uh, and I just sit it aside over here. Eventually, once I get everything on, I will zip tie that to uh, wherever presents itself as the best place for it. So do not forget to hook up your fuel temp sensor and leave it hanging out. All right, it's time to install our turbo coolant line now. The turbo coolant line, before you install it, make sure that you have the banjo washer on there uh, for the coolant line. And what I do uh, to put this on, there's a cover that goes in, the, or, I'm sorry, there's a bolt that goes in the cover of the turbo that goes to this standard here as well. So what I do is with the intercooler pipe off like this, I go ahead and fish this above the wires and then that kind of gets everything lined up. But before you can go ahead and get your banjo bolt in, you're gonna need to take your intercooler pipe and just kind of slip it on the turbo temporarily here. And what I do at this point is I go ahead and put my, it's not that complicated. I just put the bolt in on the cover and that kind of holds everything together there. And give it a couple of turns. And then I go ahead and install my bolt. Again, make sure that the seal is on the uh, on the banjo fitting for the coolant banjo. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get that shot at him. It's pretty pretty dark back in there. Yeah. No, it's fine. That's a good example there because I 
I dropped that bolt. So it had my had my washers or my washer not lined up on my banjo fitting and damn if I didn't do it again. All right, third time's a charm. This goes to show, man, that there's just not a whole lot of room to work here. looks like it's a straight shot from under there which it is however there's just not a lot of room to get your hands in there so now now we got it all right so get your coolant banjo bolt lined up with the turbo correctly and go ahead and tighten it up. What you can also do while you're working on this side of the truck to get that bolt started. I can start it with the tips of my fingers to know I haven't cross threaded it because you don't want to cross thread it for sure. And then I just use a 3 8 inch drive and a 19 metric swivel to be able to get in there and get to the banjo bolt. Also, while you're here, your fuel supply and return, I went ahead and pushed those on the fuel pipes and you just push them till they click and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this uh, banjo bolt down. It's time to put our intake bridge in now. First thing that you wanna do is make sure that you haven't dropped anything in here. Uh, have anything inside of it or anything if you want to clean some of the soot out you, possibly, you can um, remember we removed this stud right here so our lines could come out so we just want to go in and we want to tighten our stud back down for the intake runner it's not not super super tight or anything like that just snug her down the other side we just check it make sure it's snug down and then we will be installing our uh, our intake crossover here. You just want to make sure that the gaskets are in place and ready to go. And then we just want to direct it right straight down. Should go past all fuel lines and everything very cleanly and fall into place like so. So remember, you have studs and bolts here. So on the two studs, you'll have the two nuts, obviously, and then uh, three bolts on each side. So everything should line up here for you. If it doesn't, just give it a little gentle love tap on the top and she should line up. So we'll go ahead and put our bolts in and get them tightened down. We're gonna go back and we're gonna button up a couple things on the um, driver's side of the truck. Your fuel line safety clips, you wanna make sure that you reinstall those. I was, Looking at that as we were going forward here, getting ready to do the intercooler pipe, but you wanna go ahead and get these safety clips on the lines. They came off just the way they came on. A little hook here, or in, in goes in the female end of it. And then we wanna go ahead and make sure that we get our intercooler piping on, as you're pretty much done on this side of the truck as far as everything will be need to be done with the intercooler. So. We'll go ahead and put it on and have your 11 metric ready to tighten it up. So, intercoolers on, pipes on, we'll go ahead and tighten her up. We have this bracket that we took out uh, for the fuel feed line. This goes right back here and it goes on to the runner that the alternator is attached to. And I'll hold that back. You won't be able to see me put the bolts in. It's got a couple of holes in it for the wiring harnesses to attach back to your main wiring harness as well as your wiring harness that comes from your alternator. But you wanna make sure, if you did like I did, 
when you after you take the um, the CP4 out, I just took this wiring loom and, and laid it over uh, the vacuum test port. You're going to want to go ahead and, and loop that back over before you put it back into this standard. So I'm going to go ahead and the two 13 metric bolts go right here. I'll go ahead and bolt it down. All right, uh, turbo mouthpiece. We're going to go ahead and do our um, our clamp on the turbo mouthpiece and go ahead and roll it over. But I wanted to show you what you need to do to go ahead and get this on correctly on these turbos once the crossover is in. Go ahead and take your clamp and open it all the way up to where it's not engaged in the screw drive at all. And then what you want to do is you want to just go ahead and separate it. Now don't spring it all the way out, but you're going to want to separate it and start your leading edge of the clamp on the turbo can't get my can't get my hands around it at them. and then just go ahead and let it clamp on so you're just widening that you're just opening it up enough to be able to get it around the turbo there and then you just want to go ahead and lay your turbo mouthpiece in just like so and i'll go right there where your camera is at them there that is made it up with the turbo get your clamp turned around and made it up and you want to turn your clamp obviously you want to turn your clamp up where you can get to it with your 5 16 but make sure that you've got it in position correctly and the clamp is on the bottom of the mouthpiece it is time to install the egr crossover and you will remember from our removal of the egr crossover the egr crossover is where the son of a motherless goat bolt lives so we will have to reinstall that before we do that i want to show you a couple of steps that we do on the intake mouthpiece that um, it will help you with the rest of your installation once you get your clamp on the turbo mouthpiece let me scoop my thing back once you get your clamp on the turbo mouthpiece, if it does not go up and down and not be able to walk in and out, then you don't have the clamp on right. But I like to leave it loose until I get everything um, done here. And then there is a temperature sensor that has a white connector that we unplugged uh, for this. So we want to go ahead and just plug this back in first. Uh, before we do anything else so that's got that good then we'll go ahead and lay our egr crossover in now you've got a couple of different things going on down here in the valley that you did did not have before uh, now remember this coolant line we just kind of work it in and between the turbo mouthpiece sorry That's the reason why we leave that mouthpiece loose as well, because that'll get our hose where we want it. And then we're bringing that EGR crossover in, we're sitting it down. But what we're looking at here is we're making sure that we're not making any contact with any of the lines or any of the other wires in this whole setup. So that return fuel line, I like to touch to get down there and make sure that it is not uh, touching the EGR crossover and it's not so we're good to go there so now what we want to do is we want to take our uh, EGR gasket here and the little pull tab goes up it's kind of got on it goes this slant goes back towards the driver's side and I'll go ahead and start my upper two bolts and get the upper two bolts started that pretty well lets you your gasket will be pretty well lined up for all your future shenanigans in. There you go. All right. Now you have a shorter bolt and a longer bolt. The shorter bolt goes here. The longer bolt goes on the driver's side. Those are those two bolts that are for the hold down on the EGR crossover. At this point, what we do is we go ahead and attach our coolant line at the back, which is at the back by the mouthpiece right here. So again, it helps to have this loose so you can articulate that where you need to do where you need it, and then you can get to your coolant line. Then you've got a front coolant line here as well that'll be getting hooked up. So we're gonna go ahead and just get everything installed here. Ran into something here putting the um, EGR valve itself back on 
uh, that I hadn't run into before. So when you put the crossover uh, cooler on, I had already tightened down these four bolts and then your two standard bolts here as well. What I ran into there is with everything tightened down, the, um, the crossover uh, wasn't lined up to where I could get my four bolts for the EGR valve. So what I did there, because at this point with everything installed, it's just about impossible to get back down to the crossover to loosen up those eight or six bolts and two nuts to loosen it up, change the position. So what I did, I loosened up the four bolts on the crossover, on the EGR crossover, and then the two standard bolts that allowed me to line up my um, EGR valve and I'll show you that. So first thing you're gonna wanna do when putting your EGR valve on is put your gasket on. I like to use the gasket that's got the tab that pushes, that faces on the outside on the bottom. They're the same gasket either way, but it's just inverted on the top one. The top one's got this tab, it's on the outside. I like to use the tab on the bottom on this one. <clears throat> And then just go ahead and install your EGR valve. Make sure everything's cleaned out here. You don't have any, anything that's gonna go through, but your EGR valve itself goes under the main wiring harness and down. Now what I do here is I'll set this in place. The longest of the two bolts are the two bolts that um, hold this EGR valve on once the pipe is here. So what I want to do here is I want to try to get at least one of these bolts started like that right there. And that keeps that lower gasket in place for us. So it's not an absolute nightmare to get back to. So there they are. All right. Now I'm going to go with our, our gaskets into the crossover. These gaskets have got um, these little tabs here. And what those tabs do is... When you insert the gasket, they actually hold it in position right there so you can get your bolt started and don't have too much trouble there. So this is aluminum, so you want to make sure that everything's lined up correctly because you will cross thread this in a heartbeat. But that was the problem that I was having with the alignment the other way was it just wasn't wanting to take with everything tightened down. And so we had to loosen up the the bolts for this crossover and get to it. That gasket will go through. Take that back bolt out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it got close. Just squeeze by there. Now, get our next long bolt. And it threads right in. So, that will leave us to where we just got to get our bottoms in, and they shouldn't give us any trouble, and we should be off and running there. So, we'll put these four, these next two bolts in, all four of these bolts, then that gives us access. That means everything's good to go there, so then we will tighten down our uh, EGR cooler crossover, two standards there, and then these four bolts, and yes, you do have to get back to the horrible one, but like I said, with the fleece line on it, it's really not that bad to get to, so let's go ahead and tighten down your, your EGR valve. All right, now it's time for the up pipe uh, to get installed, so the same thing on the EGR valve. If you have a problem with these bolts wanting to get tight, once you tighten everything down, you can loosen these back up and then that'll give you some articulation in there to be able to tighten your hold down bolts. So what we want to do is we just want to go ahead and I'll just move this coolant line out of my way real quick. And we'll go ahead and remove these two bolts. And we'll place the gasket there. So we're just going to show you on this side. I'll just leave everything loose here too until you get your back to started at the up pipe itself. We'll go ahead and remove that real quick. All right. 
place the gasket down here, like so. And then we will take the up pipe through. Here. A couple of different things to make sure that it gets underneath of there as you're going back. It should go back no problem. All right. We've got our two long bolts here. If you don't drop them in the valley of the motor. And started fine. And this one started fine. And you've got one bolt here at the at this little standard that holds it. So again, we want to leave everything loose right here. But once these two bolts are started, you're pretty well in the clear. But I'll leave that uh, EGR valve loose as well right now. Another nice thing about leaving this mouthpiece loose is that kind of gets it out of your way when you're right here too doing this gasket on the up pipe which can be a kind of a chore here so what you want to do is this uh, coolant line going to the heater core we tried to get as best shot as we can here hope Adam can still see that all right well, you can see where that's lined up Okay. What we'll do here is what I'm doing is I'm just lining up the gasket and putting pressure against the up pipe and then switching out my hand where I can get the bolt through the gasket. And once I've got the gasket, it's pretty much a cakewalk. Well, not a cakewalk, but it's a hell of a lot less difficult to try to do this. The problem is, is you run out of hands trying to hold the pipe up. So we got one and that has our gasket still in there. Yes, it is still in here. So once you've, you've hung that top bolt, you're in pretty good shape to be able to get to the bottom bolt with the gasket. Now, if you have to work on positioning the gasket, what you'll do is you'll just have to get your hands past both of the coolant lines here and then swing it back to where it needs to go there. So. I pushed on the back side. What I did is taking my hand here and pushing the gasket from the, the driver's side of the pipe and then just pushing it over and then that lines it up with the bottom hole. So take a, put this on a long extension and just take a paper towel, put it on the head of the bolt and that hold it in the socket. That way you can get back through there. All right, time to set our alternator back in now. So we just wanna go ahead and pull the bolts out of it and then set the alternator back down in. Uh, don't, it's, you wanna do this before you start bolting your fan shroud, shroud back down the couple of bolts that we took out for the shroud. You'll need to be able to, to move them. And then here's our bottom bolt. All right, we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Time to install the uh, bracket that holds up the uh, intake mouthpiece. So there is a eyelet on the back of the wiring harness for the back bolt. Make sure that you get it installed when you're putting this long bolt in here. Important for that. All right. All right, now with those two long bolts and they go through the fuel filter housing there, I just leave them loose until I get the intake runner in here uh, so that I make sure that I've got the lineup correct for everything that I'm gonna need right there. We're on this side of the truck, really good time to show this black temp sensor that comes. It's got the two black wires out of it. This is coming from, um, I think downpipe, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and 
put it back together and then it pops into the mouthpiece right at the back there. Time for us to go ahead and put our intake piece on with the throttle valve assembly on it. So I'm just going through and pulling out my bolts that I had lined up so I'll be ready on this. You want to make sure that you've got your, I should have had this done before we started the shot, but you want to make sure that you've got your two standards over there on, the standards at the front of the alternator right here, and then this one at the fuel filter housing. We're good to go there. And check this to make sure that you've got the gasket in there as well, and it's not tore or anything, so you're good to go there. So let's go ahead and set this piece on. Out of that standard there. We'll go ahead and take two of the bolts and get them here. And that hit real close on everything there. And then, yeah, everything fit there. So we have got bolt wise. And we'll just kind of leave everything loose there so you can work with it. You have two 13 metric bolts here that will go through your dipstick and then the bracket as well. Then that goes into the intake plenum. Then there's a second bolt goes into the intake plenum here. Still good. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Couldn't lose. I had to move my power wire out of the way so I could get access to that. And then it's kind of a little bit of a harder shot, but there is a bolt that goes through the bottom of the plenum. I don't know if Adam can see. It goes right here into the bottom of the plenum. It is this bolt right here, a little 10 metric headed bolt. And just go ahead and install it as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our intake air heater, throttle valve, um, and then the sensor connector for the, the uh, intake air heater. So you just want to go ahead and install your power wire here and snug it down. And the wire kind of has a home there so it lays correctly. I'm going to snug this down, not too tight. We can start a lid there. And then the back side of this controller is the green plug and it goes in here. And then the throttle valve controller is the black connector with the red lock on it. Push it in and you can go ahead and tighten it down. You want to leave your uh, this intake air off because next wiring harness that we'll bring over will be for the alternator. Power wire from the alternator just goes below the intake here and then remove it. The alternator has got four tabs in there and then there's a locking uh, there's a locking tab on the wire itself so it doesn't spin when you tighten it. It's like so and go ahead and Put the nut on. And then the other side of that harness will come over when we do our air conditioner. But you just want to tighten this down, then make sure you put your rubber connector back over it to, to cover it up. And then you can put your intake hose on. If you don't get your finger stuck in there like I did, push it till it clicks. And there we go. All right, so then we got our intake air horn on and it's good. All right, so that's pretty well got us um, done wiring wise and everything on this side of the truck until we get back to the air intake box. All right, so we're back on the intake plenum here. We wanted to get a couple of these um, hoses secured before we went very much farther. And there's one little wiring harness we're gonna be able to work with here, so. The hold down for our coolant hose, which is not attached yet, 
goes right there. And then this PCV hose has got a standard on the back side of the plenum here. It gets a bolt through it as well. I'll just go ahead and get that installed. All right. Now we have the wiring harness. Actually, it's probably easier to go ahead and get it on this standard at the at the EGR valve. So we'll go through a couple of connections here real quick. So we're going to have our map sensor, which we can go ahead and plug it in. And then we have a EGR temp sensor that is right there. Then what else is right here in our face? Uh, the EGR valve, go ahead and hook it up. I think that's got us pretty well caught up there. So we'll go ahead and tighten these two bolts down for the coolant line. And you can go ahead and do the coolant line while you're here. So once you've got the, once you've got it on the standard, we can just go ahead and attach the coolant line down here at the, I'm try to do this with needle noses instead of getting the right pair of pliers. Then watch the coolant temp sensor wire is right here and it's tight. So you want to make sure that you just pull it straight up so you can get the clamp past it without cutting anything. There you go. All right. And that coolant line is on there at the thermostat neck. All right, time to lay our um, AC compressor in now. So we've got all the wiring on this side that can be done up to this point done, all bolts and everything, uh, all bolts and everything done. Just worth mentioning that it's always good to kind of backtrack in a job like this. So go ahead and lay our compressor over. the back side of the tower what I was looking at there was on the back side of the vacuum tower there is that is where that line goes so go ahead and throw your four bolts in all right our last little wiring harness here is for the AC and uh, the last connection for the alternator so this just kind of goes down underneath of the AC lines and routes and you've got a little clip Got a little clip that goes to the AC line there, and it's got a mark on it. The orange grommet connector two pin is the sensing wire for the alternator. Then you have three connections at the AC. You got the pressure switch first, or pressure sensors are there. And then on the AC wires, it's be color coded, so the green and black go to the top connector, and then don't forget your safety catch there. And then the, what is that, yellow, blue, blue and yellow and yellow goes to the back connector. And there you go. That's everything wired up and ready, save for the air box. One just last look around to make sure that we've got everything there. Uh, intake pipe is still loose. I'll do it once the intake is on and I'm satisfied and we don't want to do the intake until we have um, uh, primed up the uh, low side system. So we'll do that in just a second. Next is going to be our serpentine belt, which is the second crappiest part of this job. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do this oil filler neck next. All right, oil filler neck is next. You just want to get your bolt holes lined up there. Suggest a little bit of a little bit of grease on your O-ring. Then you have one bolt here at the top that holds it. Golly, I don't know how I got my hands backwards. 
And then you have one more bolt at the bottom. Two starts. Part where I roll out. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our serpentine belt on. It's nice if you got a, another guy here to help you. So. There it is. Whoo! LML serpentine belts suck. Um, so what we're using there, we talked about this first video. This is a serpentine um, belt kit. You can get it from any local auto store. They rent these as a rent -a tool It's got a section on it where you can... Uh, put a 3 8 drive ratchet. So basically that's the form that you're wanting and then you can get it. It sucks. I ain't gonna lie to you, buddy. It plain old sucks. All right, so our last two uh, bolts we have are these fan trial bolts that we loosened up so we could get our CP4 bolts out and just make it all around easier on us when we're working around the accessory drive. Just wanna make sure you get those back in. They already have a little bit of Loctite already on them, so good to go and there is that so now I'll get that other bolt in right here and we are good so I'm going to tighten those down real quick all right we want to talk to you just a little bit about fuel filters at this stage of the game so you're you're definitely close to being able to start the truck I'm going to do that little AC line right there you're very very close to being able to start the truck and we suggest go ahead and change your fuel filter before you do your initial start. We've already done that on this truck, uh, put a new fuel filter on it. When you've got lines loose, you're gonna have contaminants go through the system, um, things like that. So you wanna make sure that you change that fuel filter before, before you um, have your initial fire up. Also, we're gonna go ahead and show you now how to prime the low side fuel system. All right, so what we want to do before we put our intake back on, this gives you good access to the um, fuel filter housing. So we want to prime the low side system. So what we're doing there is we're just working the air out of the low side system, which will be fuel delivery system to the CP3. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to just go ahead and take the hand pump and pump it up a couple of times, three or four here, and then open the drain valve on the back. I use a 13 metric. This, you know, everybody knows the Duramaxes have got this junky bleeder screw that's got, takes a flat tip screwdriver. Flat tip screwdriver is going to strip it out. So what I do is I just use 13 metric. We've got a special tool form that we sell as well. 13 metric on a nut driver. Open the bleeder screw until you hear the air coming and then tighten it back down. You're looking for fuel there. So we've got a little bit of fuel already, but there's still going to be quite a bit of air in the system. five or ten pumps there open it we've got straight fuel now so that's going to and then I'll finish that off by one more round of pumps and then that's got our low side system primed ready to go all right time to go back with our air intake you want to do the box side of it first so really no easy way to do this I'll try to get you just want to try to get everything past the AC lines and get it set down in there. All right, and then you want to make sure that the wiring harness comes over top just like this. Because you will have to hook up to your mass airflow sensor all right so you want everything linked in right there so we're good to go now it's time to put our pipe on so your little corrugated end here go ahead and sit it on the box and then turn it to the air intake or to the turbo mouthpiece I'll have to loosen that just a little bit. But yeah, there's our intake in, and I'll finish up a couple of other little things, but plug in your maps, 
plural sensors. All right, then you need to just hit those with the five sixteenths. And before we, uh, I'll go ahead and push this up the rest of the way so I have five sixteenths handy with me here. Then I want to tighten down the turbo mouthpiece. Remember, we left this loose so we could articulate it to where we needed to be. But once your air intake falls in, go ahead and tighten down your turbo mouthpiece. Time to put our turbo resonator box on here. So the way that you put this back on is you just kind of start this at an angle and then it's got to go over that um, over that front tang, I guess it is. And then you just line it up with your two bolt holes here and then your 210 metrics. And then one in the back that's a lot of fun to get to. And then that's it, as soon as I can get that down there. All right, so we're good to go there. So we'll go ahead and tighten this down 10 metrics. All right, so before we go with our fire up here, we are going to go ahead and fill the coolant bottle back up. Um, the coolant bottle on this, what we're gonna do is, I'll change this coolant out, um, add it to the, the min mark on here, start the truck, run it, get it up to top operating temperature, let the uh, let the coolant burp out and check it again. Uh, we got a crossbar that goes back on here for the air filter. Don't forget to put it back in and then put the battery cables back on and then you're ready to start. So got uh, our LML done here. We're going to do a little startup on it and let you listen to it idle. But I want to talk to you about a few of the things that you do preliminary before you start these trucks. Now, you, you're working with gear mesh here or or, uh, or or gear lash, however you want to look at it. If you don't get the pump in properly and you go to spin the truck over, it could be a bad thing. So what you can do if you're worried about that is just go down the harmonic balancer, 32 metric socket, 12 point. You can turn the motor over and find, you know, if it has any hard spots in it. If it doesn't, you're okay. Go ahead and start the truck. Cranking on this, we crank for about 30 seconds. Truck won't start. You go out to the hand primer push it till it gets tight and then start the truck. You know, you go back and crank on it and it should start right up for you. So you shouldn't have any problems with that. If you do, go back, check all your connections, make sure that you didn't miss anything. But truck is, uh, runs very smooth. Um, this install, and you're watching this, he's probably looking at a weekend warrior guy, probably a weekend in the driveway, just depending on, on, on how you want to go about it. But you know, to me, if, if you're involved in these trucks, this is one of the things that you do to your vehicle um, that is all, not only preventative, a great upgrade for the truck, but it's something that, that actually is gonna help further to making you an enthusiast. You know, this is an involved install, so it's gonna make you an enthusiast um, by doing it, in, in my opinion. So we're gonna do a little startup, listen to it uh, at idle here. So you should have good quick starts here. No leaks, obviously. We want to watch the coolant bottle as well. I feel the coolant up to the uh, to the mark in it. We'll take it out, drive it, get it up to operating temperature, and then we'll recheck the coolant then as well. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little ride along. Uh, we're going to monitor actual and commanded fuel rail pressure on EFI Live, so you see how that translates on a CP3 pump to a CP4, and then we'll wrap it up for you. So one thing that we want to talk about here, uh, obviously when you fire this up, you don't want any codes. If you have any codes, um, you know, first thing I'm going to tell you is make sure that you went back and you got your fuel sensor, uh, your fuel temperature sensor hooked back up and you've got it in the, you got it in the engine valley. That's one thing that we see people do that quite a bit, or you could have just left something unhooked. Um, so there's a lot that you had to do with, and you can see our actual desired here. I think Adam's going to kind of zoom in on the screen, but, yeah, you should have zero problems with this. I mean, this is a, a easy kit on the, uh, you know, as far as being straightforward goes. But uh, well, for the bouncing camera. sorry, the uh, you know it makes 25, 24, 25,000 there, no problem. Keeps up with everything that it needs to. So looks good, feels good. Um, big shout out to Fleece on this. Uh, guys sent us down this kit uh, to install. 
So we want to give a huge shout out to them on that great kit, great fit and finish. I know this is an s, &S pump as well. Uh, big shout out to those guys. We had a couple of conversations about some things there uh, as well. So a shout out to them too. Shout out to our vehicle owner, Dean. Dean gave us this truck, went on vacation, told us to take your time and that gave Adam and I, and I the ability to work inside the office and then work on the truck too. So really good. You guys that are worried about LML CP4 explosions, don't worry about it. Do a CP3 conversion and get it off your mind. So with our wrap up here, take the truck back, check for leaks, check for coolant, uh, check for your coolant level, and you should be good to go. So I'm waiting from Thoroughbred Diesel. Adam and me, we've been poking on this for about two weeks. So uh, glad to have the truck done and glad to have been part of this installation. So if you got a question about this or a question about any other fleece products, give us a call. We will link you inside of this video to be able to purchase a CP3 emissions compliant conversion from Fleece Performance. So got any questions, just give us a call guys. Thanks for watching.